It's been four years since Valve showed signs of life. Their last game released was Half-Life and that came out in 2020. So what has Valve been doing all these years? Developing a banger. Valve's library of games has always baffled me, mainly because they make games and they take on projects that are very unique and vastly different from one another. The Half-Life series on its own is nuts, but then you have Portal, Left 4 Dead, Dota, Counter-Strike, Team Fortress. There really isn't a genre that they haven't dabbled in. I mean, I, technically I think there is, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. As far as MOBAs go, Dota 2 is a great example of a game that I don't like. Not because it's bad. Matter of fact, I would go so far as to say it's probably objectively a great game due to its success, but because I just don't enjoy games that play and look like this. And honestly, I think there's a lot of gamers that fall into that same category. Toot the same flute, one might say. I would never in my life dedicate more than like a match, if that, if I'm trying out the game on a MOBA. I've been caught. <laughs> I'm just a little fish in a barrel suckling on the teat of Valve's sweet, sweet nectar. They reeled me in with a promise of an exclusive experience. A game that's in alpha testing available through invite only. You're either invited by the Steam gods themselves or you're able to secure an invite through a friend that already has the game. So of course I was gonna play it. I had to give it a shot since I was part of that elite list of gamers that got the game. I got lucky and, and got an invite through a friend who also got lucky and got an invite through a friend. But exclusive nonetheless. I think this is honestly the smartest thing they could have done as far as marketing goes for the game because it will get people that want to experience it because of that elusive exclusivity. But they're not necessarily limiting who can get the game because you can send an invite to anybody when you have the game. And so we see this steamroll, this massive amount of concurrent players on the game, even though it's exclusive. And it's because of that that I think they are marketing geniuses. The teat from which we suckle is a smart cookie. If you're watching this video, hoping to see if this is a game that you'd like, I wanna preface this next section by saying I love Overwatch. I know that seems super random, but the reason I'm saying it is because I feel like that game's mechanics heavily influenced my views on this game and its mechanics. Naturally, as one does, I compared this game to a lot of my past and previous experiences like Overwatch, its abilities, its characters, and its mechanics. Don't get it confused and think that I'm saying that Deadlock is a clone of Overwatch because it's not that, not even close. Everyone's opinions are deeply rooted in their past experiences. So the team-based gameplay, the heroes, the abilities, the shooting, all of it felt familiar due to my Overwatch addiction. If you or a loved one suffer from Overwatch addiction, call 1-800-GET-A-LIFE. The hotline will help you touch some grass, get your shit together, and uninstall the game, you fucking loser. Yet, it also felt refreshingly new, which made it a fun learning experience. If none of that appeals to you and you already don't like MOBAs, then honestly, I don't think this is a game for you. Ugh, brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? I've just saved you the trouble of watching the rest of the video. This game follows the formula for a MOBA pretty much to a T. Pretty much to a T. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> you have four lanes or paths that you need to defend as a team of six. Each lane has different, we'll call them checkpoints of NPCs that you need to kill in order to progress through that lane. NPCs vary from the little dudes with candle heads. They're really cute actually, which either heal or just blast with their little pistols. I started blasting. Bang! To large spongy mechanics that act as a hefty barrier to lane progression. These big hunkers do quite a bit of damage. So progressing through the lanes with the little minions on your team that can take aggro is really helpful. You're fighting these waves, of course, while fighting the other team on the opposing side doing the same thing. The main goal is to kill the opponent's end boss. So you'll wanna work with your team heavily on progression strategies, such as switching lanes, protecting your NPC buddies and killing enough enemies to gain souls, which act as your main resource for upgrading your character. You do this progressively as you advance in the game. And of course, the better you do against them and the other team, the faster you'll get your upgrades. It feels like a snowball effect. The better you do, the more upgrades you get, which means you'll do better, which means you'll get more upgrades, etc., etc. If your snowball gets stuck at the top of the hill because you suck, get ready to be rolled. Not like rolled down the hill, but like rolled, like beaten 
really badly. It's a bad metaphor, forget I said anything. There are other tasks aside from what I mentioned that are optional that you can do throughout the map, such as a mid game boss, which will give your team advantages, which I thought was pretty cool. The upgrades are make or break in this game. With each character having different abilities, you can build craft to your heart's desire. Plugging and playing with different upgrades for different abilities is a major part of the game. But if you're like me, a smooth brained idiot, that sounded harsh. I'm gonna, but if you're like me and you don't like sitting there min maxing your character, you have the option to use the pre built builds, the pre built builds. Yeah, that's sure. Which are provided to you by either in game pre built ones or the community has pre built ones that you can follow and go through as you play through the game as well. Let the other nerds do the work for you and you can just reap the benefits. All of what I just described pretty much also describes every other MOBA ever. What makes this game unique is its core gameplay. League of Legends has click to move mechanics from a top down perspective. Smite takes it a little bit further with WASD movement and a closer camera angle, but still doesn't quite hit that immersion sweet spot, especially with its limitations to the movement. This game puts you into the environment, adds verticality to the maps, and capitalizes on its third person perspective, adding some really fun movement into the mix. The graphics are okay. They're not incredible by any means, but that is subject to improve knowing the game is still in development. What I will say is it does have an appeal to it. The color palette, the character designs, and the abilities all seem well made and pleasing to look at with a few exceptions. I don't want to get into the critical portions of this too much because I know that due to it being an alpha, it's going to change exponentially. What I can say is what they have now is a great starting point with 21 characters, a map. They only have one map and loads of potential. I've been maining seven head Timu Genji over here, which has some pretty cool abilities. I mostly like it because it has poke mechanics. And then if you have an enemy that's critically low, you can go in for the kill with this flying strike and the shadow transformation ult where abilities are refreshed quickly. You have infinite ammo and your damage gains resists and immunity to negative status effects. So it makes you pretty much a God, even though it's very limited in time, it's very useful in certain situations. Hello. So I'm sorry to interrupt right now, but I'm genuinely sad. I'm editing this stupid video and I saw something. <laughs> All right, so look at this. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> seven heads, meaning seven heads. So now we know where that came from, where that decision spawned. <laughs> Bro, I'll never play that character again, I promise you guys. Some other ones that I've really enjoyed playing with were Grandma Hanzo here. This character has a lot of long range abilities with a big finisher move for the ultimate. An exploding owl that you can guide and explode onto enemies. It could be really obnoxious. <laughs> Elvis has some unique abilities as well. This is a character that applies dots, which can be really useful and has an instant kill, the killing blow if they're below the kill threshold, which can be pretty detrimental. And blind cop guy has gained some infamy within my friend group because when we go up against him or when we use him, we have something that's called the claw. Basically, it's this like magical claw that comes down and just grabs the enemy if they can't get out of the little area fast enough and that grabs Crab stuns them for a good, I don't know how long actually, it probably says immobilized durations is 1.75 seconds. Enough time to just absolutely obliterate that person in the face. Although I haven't played these other characters too often, I have been absolutely rocked by people who've mastered ugly horn guy. This guy is an absolute tank that does a ton of damage through lifesteal. He's even like a deadly doom fist as well. He goes up into the air and crashes down doing damage and stuns people. And that stun prevents you from doing things like running away <laughs> or, you know, shooting back at him, which I've found to be super deadly for my main character, the big forehead lady, because I usually go into self heal through bullets. And when I can't shoot at the mother, at the guy that has stunned me, I can't get my life back. And so my health goes away pretty much instantaneous. So, you know, maybe this is a counter for the character that I like to main and that's why I think he's so good. I don't know, man. I've played against one that got like 40 kills one game where everybody else's average was like, Ten. So <laughs> do with that information as you will. It probably needs some balancing changes. This Wally -E character is another big tank guy that can be super, super deadly if played correctly, of course. He's got an interesting ability, which is the hook, which I think pairs well with a lot of other characters, which makes him really fun to play with and play with somebody who's playing with him on, on your team. For example, a combination that I can think of just off the top of my head is the 
dirty welder lady has a wall so you can hook somebody in and put up a wall behind them so they can't get away after the hook after you you know beat them up a little bit and they try to be oh you know i'm getting killed so they try to run away they run into this wall they run their forehead into this wall and their teammates can't come in and help either so pretty deadly combinations honestly with some of these characters and that's just a simple one and that just gives you a small idea of some of the variety that you get here i think everybody i think there's enough variety here for everybody to find a character or or maybe more that they really click with and even going a step further there will be groups that can optimize team composition and be super competitive and dominate in games whether you're on that level of sweaty nerd or you just want to hop in with some buddies play some games have some fun talk some shit this game is definitely more enticing to play with other people i soloed queued a couple of times and although i still had fun there's still fun to be had it didn't compare to playing with comms i don't know if that's redundant to say because it really applies to any multiplayer game but i at least wanted to touch on the party invites and say that they work well seemingly no connectivity issues at least as long as i've been playing so that's definitely a plus for a game in its alpha stages I was gonna make this portion of the video about future changes and updates coming to the game, but after thorough research, I couldn't find anything solid like a roadmap for the game. At least nothing confirmed by the devs. So instead I'll make this the changes I hope will happen. Balancing issues obviously need to be addressed as there's always gonna be tweaking happening, especially with new characters being introduced in the future, hopefully. I do think at the moment there are abilities that need heavy nerfs as well as other abilities that feel as if they're completely useless. This is a play test at the end of the day, so finding these issues now can definitely benefit the game in the future. Speaking of possible new characters, I hope we get a healthy influx of new characters and abilities throughout the game's lifespan. Again, it's something that I think is reasonable to assume is going to happen to models of games similar to it, having done that in the past. Adding new characters as well as hopefully new maps and new game modes. With the obvious ones out of the way, I would like to touch on performance issues. I think this game suffers heavily from performance issues. So hopefully optimizing the game is high on the priority list for the devs. So the mantling and movement feels awkward. This translates into character abilities. For example, Yamato's grapple that I talked about earlier, where she pulls herself towards an enemy seems to glitch out if the enemy seems to be moving up in the air. A lot of enemies do have abilities that move them up in the air or if they walk behind objects. Animations in general could honestly use an overhaul and be made to look a little bit smoother and work a little bit better. The style of the game takes inspiration from different time periods, hitting an alternate history feel with a sprinkle of fantasy aspects. I hope they capitalize on this and work to add detail in the game, as I feel the design right now is a little bit cookie cutter, simple and uninspired. Talking about enemy design and map decor in particular. It's not a major complaint because the game is fun regardless and the maps are well designed as far as complementing the gameplay with plenty of cover, movement, and lane change opportunities. I could probably come up with a couple of more, but to be completely honest with you, it's like three in the morning and I need to go to sleep. So that's gonna be it for me today. Before you go though, I'd love to know if there's any other MOBAs that you guys know about falling into that unique category. Now that I've dabbled, I'd love to find some more games that I can play and like throughout that genre. Thanks for watching though. Don't forget to leave that like sacrifice for the algorithm gods and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.